That's a dog, but. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're well, I hope you're safe. If you're new here, my name is Chloe and this is the channel in which I speak about books. Today I'm gonna to be doing my November wrap up, talking through the 17 books that I read in the month of November. I'm gonna be doing it a little bit differently this time and actually arrange this to talk about books from the ones that I liked the most to the ones that I liked the least. And I'm gonna be giving them all a star rating, which I haven't done in past videos. I took part in two different readathons, Indigathon and the Thousand and Doors readathon, both of which I will link down below. Yeah, it was a pretty chaotic reading month to be honest. I read quite a few books that I did not like this month. I found some new favorites. I read The Hunger Games for the first time. I read a book while I was not sober. I've got three five-star reads, five four-star reads, five three-star reads, and four two-star reads. And my average rating this month was 3.58, which is not great. Patty and I are here, we're ready to share our thoughts and let's just get right into it. We have got Empire of Wild by Sherry Dimaline. I slept on this book for so long because I read The Marrow Thieves by Sherry Dimaline earlier this year, which is like an indigenous YA dystopian and it's one of my favorite books. Naturally, instead of just wanting to read another book by the same author, I was like, oh my goodness, what if it doesn't hold up to the Marrow Thieves? I'm just gonna keep putting it off, which was silly because I read this book and I adored it. This is an adult supernatural thriller slash horror that follows a Métis woman named Joan who one year prior to this book taking place, her husband mysteriously disappears and nobody knows what's happened to him. One day she goes to Walmart and there's a big tent in the parking lot of this Walmart. She goes inside, realizes that it's like a traveling evangelical ministry and the pastor, priest, reverend is her husband, but he doesn't recognize her and doesn't know who she is. And then the story unfolds from there. Even like say now, I think the concept is so creepy and just so good. The book is centered around the traditional Métis story of the Rogaru, which is like a werewolf-like creature, but then also there are horror elements related to organized religion and natural resource extraction. It's dark and it's horrifying in a really smart, really unsettling way. I think the characters were so well done and so distinct. This was just really, really good. Patty also liked it. She would actually specifically like to eat it. I think you should read it. Five stars if that wasn't clear. Next, we've got Braiding Sweetgrass, Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge, and the Teachings of Plants by Robin Wall Kammerer. The author of this book is a botanist, she's a professor, and she's also an enrolled member of the Citizen Potawatomi Nation. I have seen this book around, but I am not a particularly nature-y person. I went sprayed deep mosquito spray on the inside of a, an enclosed tent. I just didn't know if this book would be for me. Oh my gosh, again, another book I've been sleeping on for too long. I mean, I think you can tell by how much I've tabbed this book up. This book was gorgeous. A big part of what, what the author is obviously trying to do is challenging sort of those tensions that exist between traditional teachings and like quote unquote western scientific knowledge and ways of knowing. She writes beautifully and really impactfully about humans relationship with the earth and nature and the importance of reciprocity and gratefulness. When I say that this book shifted the way that I think about the world and my relationship with it, I am being 100% serious. If you're someone who's into to environmentalism, if you're someone who cares about climate justice, or if you're just someone who likes to get their hands in the dirt, I think that this book was written for you and you should read it and you would love it, but also everybody should read it. Definitely a perspective shifting book and I gave it five stars. My third and final five star read of the month was The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. So this is a book about a teenage girl named Ziomara whose family is from the Dominican Republic and she's growing up in Harlem, New York. And she's struggling with her family, with organized religion. Her family's really Catholic and she's being pressured into undergoing confirmation and she isn't really sure if she wants to. With sexuality, really having a crush on a boy for the first time. And throughout all of these different things, she's writing poetry and is being encouraged 
encouraged by a teacher to join her school's slam poetry club and perform and compete. The entire book is told through poems. I listened to the audiobook of it, which is read by the author who has done slam poetry. So that was a really incredible reading experience. This book was beautiful. You really, really feel for the characters. I think the issues that it explores are really important and are done really well. Moving on to our four star reads. We've got The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. It's like a dark feminist fantasy and it takes place in a puritanical society, the quote unquote prophet's word is law, about a girl named Emmanuel whose father was black, her mother was white, and is sort of inherently viewed as bad because she is biracial. One day Emmanuel goes into the forbidden forest near her house and comes across these witches and somehow, some way, she begins to unleash these plagues upon the community in which she lives. I'm still pretty new to fantasy and I think that this book is a great choice for other folks who are new to fantasy because I really enjoyed it. It's an awesome kind of witchy book with definitely those explicitly feminist underpinnings. I haven't read The Handmaid's Tale yet. This has sort of replaced that feeling of need to read that book and I'm very happy about that because I did really enjoy this. Next we have New American Best Friend by Olivia Gatwood. This is a quick book of poetry. It's like a coming of age poetry book covering topics like gender, like sexuality. Um, so I have historically not been a huge poetry person. A friend gifted me this saying this is kind of a good intro into poetry and I trusted her but I also had a question mark in my head before I read it about whether my brain would be more open to poetry if I was intoxicated in some form. That is how I read this book. And I will say that the reading experience was fantastic. So I really enjoyed it. I can't remember details of it, but I remember a sensation of liking the book. And that's what matters, isn't it? I'm sorry. Next, I'll chat quickly about two graphic novels that I read. One is The Outside Circle by Patti Labucan Benson and the second Surviving in the City by Tasha Spillett. These are both graphic novels written by indigenous authors and exploring themes related to indigeneity, specifically in the Canadian settler colonial context. The Outside Circle is about a man, I believe in Edmonton. He is, I believe, a First Nations man who is involved in gang violence and ends up becoming incarcerated and ends up at this specific facility for indigenous men where he's he's supposed to kind of be rethinking about what masculinity means and his responsibilities as an indigenous man. I thought it explored a lot of really important topics. The art style wasn't my favorite. It kind of felt like superhero-esque to me, but I did think it was really good and it was really quick. Surviving in the City is about two high school age, I believe also First Nations girls in Winnipeg and Manitoba, and it kind of broadly explores the epidemic of missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit folks in Canada and in the United States. The illustrations in that one were beautiful and this one was quite moving. I believe I did cry in that one. Um, I won't share too much about the plots of these because they're graphic novels, they're short, but I would definitely suggest you read both of them. And my final four-star read for the month of November is The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Um, I would say that I don't need to give a synopsis, but when I tell you that I did not know what this book was about going into it, I'm not kidding. Did I know that this is basically a book about pitting a bunch of kids in this dystopian, horrifying society against each other to fight to the death under the assumption that only the rich ones have any chance of living? No, damn, this is dark. I'm not gonna give more of a synopsis because I think everybody knows what this is about except for me. If you haven't read it though, I would recommend that you do because this was actually a really, really fun read. I did cry. The author's got some issues with proper comma use that whatever, it's fine. Will I continue? I don't know, especially because I can see it going into a love triangle. And when I tell you how little interest I have in observing a love triangle between people who are named Peta, Katniss, and Gale. I just, I'm good. But I did like this. That's The Hunger Games. We're into the realm of the three star books now. The first of which is The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. This is a romance between a woman and a man, Tiffy and Leon. Tiffy has just left an abusive ex-partner and is trying to find a place to stay in London that she can afford. And she ends up coming across an ad by a man named Leon, who is a nurse who works night shifts, who is offering up his 
flat, including the, the bed that he sleeps in during the times when he is at work. So basically she's staying at the flat all night and he's staying at the flat all day. And the idea is that they'll never even meet one another. The idea is like fun and quirky, but I also found it acutely relatable because I lived in London, England for two years and I'm keenly aware of just how maddeningly expensive rent is there. Tiffy and Leon are sharing this bed, are sharing this flat. They end up leaving each other notes and slowly but surely a friendship, maybe romance develops. Uh, the book is told through both of the characters' point of view, so it alternates between Tiffy and Leon's voices, but Leon's voice was a little bit hard for me to get into and a little bit hard to read. Am feeling a little bit sad. Am not sure what to do. Like it's not full sentences, and I found that really jarring to read and it got better over time, but I never found it enjoyable, although it did make it distinct. I thought the book was really cute. I did really like the characters. I especially liked Tiffy because I thought she was really quirky and funny. And I did find myself laughing at points. I thought that it touched on a lot of really important topics specifically related to abusive relationships. Leon's brother is incarcerated throughout the duration of the book. And there were some really kind of interesting conversations around incarceration that were a little bit unexpected for a romance book that I thought were well done. I gave it 3.75 stars which is absurd because it wasn't my favorite romance book ever it was a really 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 slow burn and again Leon's voice and it got 3.75 stars which is not at all a bad rating in my books another book in this kind of like high three star range is love is an x country by Rhonda Gerard my first ever arc or advanced readers copy that I've ever read so thank you so much NetGalley for providing me with an e-copy of this to review love is an x country is a memoir more about a queer, Muslim, fat, Arab American, and specifically Palestinian American woman reflecting on all of those different elements of her identity. And I think that those things that I just talked about, like her queerness, her fatness, her religion, her ethnic background were all things that were grappled with really well. Her writing was gorgeous and I got through this book really, really quickly. Like I found it very, very readable. I'm giving it a 3.75 stars and I don't love rating memoirs, but for the purposes of, of ranking and also because I feel like I should because I'm reviewing an arc, I think where it kind of went awry for me is that this is being pitched as a travel memoir, which doesn't really feel quite it. There are elements of kind of a road trip across the states, but it's not travel oriented. It's quite non-linear, which isn't annoying in and of itself, but I did find myself kind of confused at parts. Like I couldn't tell sequentially what had happened before other things. So I enjoyed it. I thought particularly sort of her reflections on her relationship with her body, her sexuality, all of those things were, were really great and I found really eye-opening. Those are my haphazard thoughts on that book. But again, thank you, NetGalley. The book comes out, I believe in February, 2021, if it sounds like something that you'd be interested in reading. Moving on down, we have got Something to Talk About by Meryl Wilsner. Beautiful cover, by the way. Uh, this is a sapphic female-female romance set in Hollywood. So we've got a showrunner, like, a, like she's a writer for famous shows, an Asian-American woman named Jo, and her executive assistant, Emma, the Jewish bisexual woman. Basically, the book starts and Joe is asking Emma to go to a big award ceremony with her. Rumors start spreading about the fact that maybe the two of them are together. From there, things kind of happen. There were a lot of things that I really liked about this book. I thought the Hollywood setting was really, really fun. I did really like the characters and there was a great cast of kind of side characters. The book was like quite explicitly feminist and, and was set in sort of a Me Too Hollywood backdrop and engaged with sexism and racism within the industry in a way I thought that was really well done. The bisexual representation in this book I thought was really good. I thought it was a fun book. The things that, again, were not my favorite pieces of this book. The pacing was like all over the place. It was really, really fast. The beginning again, you have within the first 10 pages, they're going to an award ceremony together. And oh my goodness, there's all these rumors and then things get really, really slow. And then it's a really slow burn romance. I do think I maybe like a little bit more steam to my romance and the miscommunication trope in this book, which sometimes I like, I didn't love it in this one. There are a lot of points where it's like, if you used your words, this problem wouldn't be here. I overall enjoyed it. I gave it an encouraging and happy 3.5 stars and will definitely read more from this author. My next 3.5 star book is 
Embroideries by Marjan Satrapi, who is the same author that writes Persepolis. This is a really cute, again, quite short graphic novel about a group of Iranian women. I think we've got three generations, a grandmother, a mother, and a daughter. The husbands are napping or out of the room and they've got several women over at one of their houses. And basically the entirety of the book is these women sharing rumors, gossiping, telling stories. They're talking about marriage, they're talking about sex, they're talking about, well, that's mostly what they're talking about. I thought that this was funny. I thought that it was really cute. It was quite short. It doesn't follow obviously like an arc in terms of a plot. It's kind of just a story and another story and another story and another story. Kind of a really cool and endearing portrait of the women in uh, in the author's life. So I thought this was fun and gave it 3.5 stars. So we've got one more book in the three star category and this book I gave three stars and that is Stay Gold by Tobley McSmith. This is a YA book about a trans teenage boy named Pony who his family moves, he's going to a new school and he decides that he's going to go stealth or conceal his transgender status. He meets a girl in high school named Georgia. They begin to develop a crush on one another. So I think that I thought that this book, even if you look at the cover, it kind of reads as if it's going to be like a fluffy, cute, happy romance. There are elements of that, but what I would say is that this book is a lot darker than that. I have a lot of thoughts on this book and I will preface all of them by saying that I am a cis person. Take what I say on this book with a grain of salt, but I cannot imagine that many trans people would read this book and find it enjoyable because it is really triggering. There are a lot of really hard elements of, of transphobia. Pony is not really accepted by his family, specifically his father who continues to misgender him and not accept his identity. The coming out storyline in this book is not great. Pony is finding himself being pressured by specifically one friend to come out. There is specifically quite severe acts of transphobic violence that go on in this book. Like, yes, there's like a cute kind of high school relationship, but it's like really not the main feature of the book. In addition to the fact that a lot of the plot and the narrative of this book reads as though it's supposed to be educational. And I mean, it, and it is educational. I think that if you're a cis person who doesn't know a lot about trans experiences or trans issues, this book does a really good job at explaining what it means for trans men to wear binders, the importance of pronouns, the difference between gender identity and sexual orientation. Like these are all things that are engaged with in, in quite informative ways, but between that kind of educational piece and that quite dramatic dark piece, I kind of found myself wondering who the book is written for and thinking that if you're a cis person wanting to read a book about a trans main character by a trans author, I think that this book is a great choice. The other thing that I'll say about this book found that it was a little bit by erasure-y. There's one point in the plot where Pony goes to like a queer youth gathering and he sees a girl from his high school who he knows is dating a guy. He's like, why is this girl here? She must be straight. I guess she could be an ally, which is like, Ugh! made me sad. Those are my like really discombobulated thoughts about this book. That was just my experience. It's not like a light fluffy YA. It's tough to read, though educational. So yeah, three stars. And I'm now getting to the four books that were in the realm of two star reads for me this month, three of which have received quite a bit of love on booktube, so I'm not feeling great about that. The first is Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones, which is a book I was quite highly anticipating. It is a horror novella about a group of teenagers several years prior to the book taking place found a mannequin in the woods that they started to play with and they named him Manny and then they stopped playing with him and then presumably because the mannequin is sad that they no longer are playing with him, perhaps the mannequin or perhaps not the mannequin begins to murder these teenagers. I think that that concept is really fun and I gave it 2.5 stars and not two stars because I just still think that the idea is so bizarre. But this book just didn't. It was a novella, meaning it was quite short and I found myself still struggling to get through it. I found that it got 
quite repetitive. I enjoyed the writing overall, but there were a couple pieces of description, particularly a line about quote unquote oily pee that I found deeply off-putting. And I think the thing that disappointed me the most, this book does kind of leave you guessing between whether it's a paranormal or a real life murderer type situation. And I was really excited about that. And then I actually didn't really like it that much in the end, or at least the way that that kind of tension question went. Yeah, I mean, I can see myself liking other things that Stephen Graham Jones writes. I really liked the idea. I just didn't really like the execution of it. Yeah, so 2.5 stars. And the next three books were all just two star reads and I didn't like them. I didn't like them. The first is The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Ni Vo. I have seen this book get so much love on booktube. This is a book occurring in like an Asian inspired setting and it's at kind of the turn of an empire where one empress has left and a new emperor, empress people are coming in. And the book takes place, the main character who uses they them pronouns, which is cool, has the task of recording sort of the history of the previous empire. I really wanted to like it, but I found it really hard to get into. The language was kind of hard for me to wrap my head around. It felt like a lot of really intense world building for a really short book and that I didn't really quite get the payoff from that. Maybe I'm just not smart enough to get it. That was it is kind of the way that I felt about it at the end. Feel free to disagree with me. The next book that was a two star rating for me was This Is What It Feels Like by Rebecca Barrow about three high school girls who had a band and then their band broke up and then they had incredibly eventful and dramatic lives for 16 year olds. So they had this big falling out and the band broke up and then the band is getting back together for this battle of the bands type situation. Mm, I so didn't like this. I found it so boring. I found it so boring. I should have DNF'd it. I knew from like the first 50 pages that I wasn't gonna be into this book. There's nothing inherently wrong with it. The writing is good. It has good reviews. If the idea of like a girl band getting back together intrigues you, then you will probably like this. I finished this book and I was like, great, I'm gonna get rid of this. And the last book <laughs> is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. Home Before Dark is about a girl, Maggie. Her name is Maggie. She lived for 20 days when she was five years old in a house that her family promptly left, presumably because it was haunted. And they left this house and her dad wrote a book that became this best-selling, super famous book about their family's experience in this haunted house. She grows up, she never really believed any of that hype. And then after her dad passes away and has actually left the house to her, she goes back to the house to try to figure out what was actually going on because neither of her parents ever told her kind of the truth about the house. This book also is kind of trying to do a similar thing to Night of the Mannequins in that it is kind of keeping you guessing between whether the house is haunted or whether there are actual humans behind what's going on. Something again that I was excited for and that I in the end just like didn't really care about. I found it pretty predictable. I found it to be super boring. I found this book to be so boring and like the last 10 pages there are a couple like plot twists and then even at that point I was like, I guess that this is like kind of a big deal, but I'm so uninvested in this book that I just don't care anymore. I didn't find that this book was creepy or thrilling and it felt so, 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 so close to The Haunting of Hill House, like the TV show, not the book, because the book and the show are quite different. I spent this entire book waiting for it to get better and wondering if I was reading a different book than what the rest of the internet had been reading. And uh, no, there we have it. Those are the 17 books that I read in November. Let me know what your favorite book that you read in November was. And let me know if you've read any of the books that I read in November and what your thoughts on those were. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye.